The counterpart to MySM check is MySQL check. This utility works counter or runs counter to MySM check because it's run against online MySQL instances. So let's label this section MySQL check. And features, by contrast to MySM check, it checks, well, similar to ISAM check, it checks, repairs, and optimizes tables. And by contrast, it's used in online mode, so online usage. Also by contrast, MySM check, MySQL check requires authentication because it's executed against a running server. So MySM check requires that you have access to read write the tables, at least read the tables to check for any damage and write to make changes. And you, with my ISM check, indicate the path to the table or tables that are to be analyzed. Whereas with MySQL check, you simply indicate the authentication credentials, which include user, password, and optionally host. If you don't specify the host, then the default host or local host is the default host. So local host equals default. If you neglect to specify the user, then the default user is the logged in user. So user equals default. And there is never a password default, although it's blank, but that should not be enabled for any of your users. So it should always fail if properly configured. So MySQL check will allow you to check various tables. Also, by contrast to MySM check, MySQL check checks various storage engines, but is optimized like MySM check for my ISAM storage engines, storage repositories. We've mentioned that MySM is the default storage engine for MySQL. You can confirm this using the client utility to enter terminal monitor mode or run it without entering the mode, not interactively. So let's try it for example. Well, the user is the default, so let's just indicate the password followed by the following to execute show engines. And this will tell us, once we've authenticated, what the default as well as the supported engines are. So here are the engines. My ISAM is the default. And the others that are enabled include memory, InnoDB, and MRG, my ISAM, while the others are currently disabled but certainly can be turned on with relative ease. But the idea is my ISAM is the default. So whether you're using a front end such as PHP, my admin, or the client utilities included with MySQL to create tables, it will default, or those tables will default to MySM. So how do we use MySQL check? Similarly to MySM check, so usage. One possible way is to authenticate and check all databases. So check all databases. This performs a wholesale check for you. Invocation would be MySQL check authenticate as a given user who has the rights to interrogate all of the databases, since that's what we're aiming to do. Prompt for the password. Optionally indicate the host, otherwise localhost is the default. And mandatorily include all databases. This will check, and optionally we could use the short option uppercase A, all databases. So checks all databases. Again, you need proper privileges. Now it checks and it returns to standard out its findings. So let's clear screen, reset the buffer, do a which MySQL check. It's in our path, so it tabs out. RPM query file against it, whether on Red Hat or SUSE, both support. The RPM package management system shows that it's one of the client utilities. And if you execute it with no options, it returns its defaults, including just like with the other utilities, the configuration files that are parsed upon invocation. So just like the other utilities, the global file is consulted first, followed by 
the user's specific file. And additionally, MySQL check checks for a section labeled MySQL check. So you can always global the or gl check the global configuration file my.cnf to see if the section is defined. Let's grep MySQL check from it just to see if there are any directives that are spelled out. And let's include a forward slash and a space. And nothing's defined, so the defaults will not be inherited from that file. So the built-in defaults will be set if any for any of these options. For example, one of the options is to have MySQL check auto repair any damage that it finds. But that's set to false, which means the default nature is like MySQL check. It simply checks and reports and leaves it up to you to determine whether or not you'd like to have things repaired in a subsequent step. So let's launch MySQL check against our local instance. Since we're in as root, no need to specify. We'll have it prompt us for the password. And we want to check all databases and see what it dumps the standard out. Let's authenticate. And notice that it jumps to the bottom rather quickly by enumerating each of the databases and tables and their statuses. So one client is using or hasn't closed the table properly. So that's something that could result in table errors later on that MySQL check or MyISM check could rectify for us. But as you can see, for the most part, most of the tables, virtually all of them, are intact and have passed the MySQL check. So here we see those issues now. Of course, it throws an error regarding MySQL user and MySQL DB regarding the fact that the table hasn't been closed properly. So we could use MySM check taking the server offline, of course, or use MySQL check to repair any options that have been found or any problems, that is, that have been found. Now, you may also indicate specific databases. So let's turn on that option. First, let's show you the short option. That's upper A performs the same thing once you've authenticated. This is an optional way of scanning. And notice this time, no errors were returned, which begs the question if we rerun it with the long option at this particular point, and it runs properly. So there's really nothing to fix at this stage. Now, perhaps there was a stale connection that resulted in my SQL check re returning that it found an error. So to check specific databases, simply indicate the databases option followed by one or more databases on the command line. So let's just note to check specific databases. And just like my ISM check, you can also specify tables to scan independently. So 2A, similar to above, MySQL check with the user root, prompt for password, and optionally the host, followed by databases, one or more databases, DB1, DB2, so on and so forth. Let's check the MySQL database. So this checks the MySQL DB specifically. And then we'll extend it momentarily to check more than one in one attempt. So this will prompt us to authenticate. And it checks exclusively the database and all of its tables. So there are the tables associated with the MySQL database. All have passed the check. Again, if you run help against MySQL check or no options, scroll towards the top, you'll see how the options are invoked. This is where the information is pulled from. For example, short and long options to check all databases, or simply a list of databases, which can be indicated using upper B, which for my ISM check performs a backup if changes are to be made. So be careful how you use the options across commands because they do differ at times, with the exception of some of the common ones like lower U for user, lower P for password prompt or password specified on the command line. So databases checks one or more databases if specified. But the default behavior of the utility is to follow the format above, which is MySQL check options and the name of the database and optionally one or more tables, or a list of databases and optionally one or more tables, or 
all databases. So to check a specific database, let's copy our item. We'll be checking just MySQL. Now we'll check two databases since we've checked MySQL itself. And we can dump the databases a number of ways. For example, as we know, we can use MySQL show as opposed to running MySQL with show databases since this is a front end. So MySQL show prompt and we'll tell it to just dump the list of databases by not specifying any options, which is the equivalent of executing the show databases. So here are some other DBs. So let's have it check both MySQL and LCBT prods demos and all associated tables. And this will check just those two one at a time for problems that could cause issues down the line. There should be very few problems because we've already run MySM check and since all of our DBs and tables are MySM check base or MySM tables, MySM checks already done the work for us, which is why currently no problems are turning up. But we haven't also performed a thorough check or an extended check as you can with MySM check. So let's go back to our notes and just include that one way to invoke a check against multiple databases is of course to authenticate, prompt for a password, indicate the databases option which expects one or more on the command line and then we'll indicate the second and this checks two DBs MySQL as well as or followed by and it's the databases as you can tell are checked in the order in which they're specified on the command line. So it checks these two DBs returning an error as begin. These are not thorough checks, so they're not deep checks for deeper inconsistencies in the database. Now, let's just note another option to see, and that is to check tables that have changed since the last check. This will save you some time in the event that you perform checks regularly and or automatically via cron. So for example, MySQL check, we know that we check from time to time our different DBs and tables. So we may not necessarily want to have the process run through all of them. There is an uppercase C option which allows us to check only those tables that have changed since the last check. But this is based on tables having been scanned at some point or checked or analyzed at some point. So let's just note checks tables that have changed since last check, which of course begs the question, how does MySQL check know whether or not a table has been checked and when it was checked? Well, let's first run it to see what happens. This will we didn't actually specify any databases. The C option knows to check only items that have changed since the last time. Let's kill this interface and repaste. And notice it says we didn't give it the right arguments. We didn't specify all databases, for example. This is a sort of scan that you'll indicate with all databases to have MySQL check figure out which tables, if any, have changed since the last time. And notice that it returned that these tables are already up to date. So how does it know that the tables are up to date? Well, stored in the metadata for each table is information such as the engine type as well as the last time the table's been checked. So let's just note that each table stores important, and this is across DBs, so not just MySQL or across DB engines, DBMSs, stores important metadata including, but not limited to, the last time the table was checked. So how can we confirm outside of MySQL check the last time a table was checked? Well, using the MySQL show command, which is why we looked at it initially, authenticating, of course, having it prompt us for password, and returning the information about, let's say, MySQL user, the DB MySQL, the table user, returns checked status plus additional information, as we've seen. So we can verify using MySQL show or 
using show within terminal monitor and information about a table, but from the shell, which means we can script it, which is always important, we can verify this key piece of data. Let's authenticate to get information about the user table. And if we scan carefully, we'll see that one of the columns is the check time, which is off to the right in our display. So if we match the check time in the vicinity of the update time, we'll see that there are three times, create time, update time, and check time. So this particular table user in the MySQL database was last checked at 612 on this particular date, which was about five minutes ago. So unless there was a change during the last roughly four to five minutes, execution of MySQL check will have nothing to return other than the table is up to date. And by change, we mean some sort of change that could cause the table to become inconsistent or to have garbage information and so on. Now, if there is a problem with your table, you can use a number of options to repair. So let's go back to this area. Repair options. And some are more intense than others. If we use the quick option, this performs a quick repair against a given table. So for example, if we suspect that the demos table is damaged, we could execute my SQL check with a quick option. This time we don't want it to just check for those that have changed since the last time they were checked. And then instead of all databases, we'll indicate the MySQL database. And we can specifically indicate the user table if that's the table that's of interest. If we suspect that there could be damage in that particular table. And as we can see, just that table has come back. Now what if we indicated just the database itself as opposed to the individual table, then all tables are checked as they are dependent upon the database container. So that's a MySQL check quick option. It performs a quick repair if there's any damage. So a simple invocation would be MySQL check, authenticate, prompt for password, perform a quick repair, against the MySQL DB checks all tables. Whereas, as we've shown you, the following MySQL check, authenticate, prompt for password, quick check against MySQL user, checks MySQL.user table specifically. Now, another thing to know about MySQL check, because it uses TCP IP as well as Unix domain sockets, it can be run across the wire as well as locally. Whereas MySM check is designed to be run locally against the file system as opposed to via a socket or TCP IP. Let's just note that that MySQL check runs via Unix sockets as well as TCP, whereas my ISAM check uses neither as it relies upon disk access to the table, one or more. So distinct differences, which means if you are responsible for remote MySQL servers, which we could generate as another task. Let's try to first do a check across the wire, then a repair. So check slash repair across the wire. So you're responsible for MySQL servers in a data center. And you need to perform these routine checks perhaps automatically via cron and or manually so that you can see on the console what's happening. We can simulate that quite easily by connecting to a remote system. Let's control shift T and SSH is user root or Linux CBT to our Linux CBT serve one box. And as we can see, it's connecting with IP version six, which is fine for us and PTY allocation request fails. So that's probably a hardwired setting in the SSH configuration that we used 
to force the user to have to use SFTP. So let's SSH is root to Linux CBT serve one. Again, the IPv6 address came back because our host file probably has an entry in there or DNS is returning that. Let's nets that NTLP just out of curiosity or ANT for the connection grep22. Let's change this to T grep22. And as you can see, our SSH client from the SUSE box used IPv6 to source the connection. Notice the other connection is still open. And if we turn on the P option, this will return the PID that's associated with those connections. So this PID, the first one, or the other one, is 10452. And the other one is 10422. So with that said, back to MySQL for a second. So now we're on the Red Hat side, CAT ETC Red Hat release. This is 5.4, and it has a suite of MySQL utilities available. A which of MySQL on the remote side shows that it's in user bin and an RPM query file of user bin. MySQL reveals that it belongs to the MySQL package. So we can use MySQL as well as any number of utilities that are included. MySQL check, dump, etc. So from this host, if we execute MySQL check, having it prompting prompt us for the password and indicating the host Linux CBT SUSE one which we'll need to be sure is resolvable so let's let's try to just send one packet to it to see if DNS is or host file is properly configured and nothing's coming back that means it's not configured so we'll have to use the IP address so MySQL check prompt for password against the host 192.168.75.50 we'll connect across the wire and do what it, we tell it to do, such as check only those databases or those tables that have changed. So we'll tell it to check all databases, but only those that have changed since the last check. And so long as MySQL is listening to a routable IP address, we should be able to connect to it as the user indicated, which defaults the root, of course. So now the query is being submitted to the remote side. Let's confirm on the remote side that indeed it's listening. Let's control, kill this window. And notice an error was ultimately returned, which means it may not be listening. So let's net that NTLP grep 3306, which is the default port. And indeed, it is listening on the all IP addresses. So let's check our credentials here. Access denied. Now, the reason why access is denied is either one of two things. Either the root user isn't matching up or we indicated the wrong password. So we would have to specify explicitly the username or ensure that the user exists on a remote side by granting the user access or granting a user with a variable host access to the service. So let's just confirm our password yet again, and it's failing, and that's because root at the two parts of the credential at the IP address is undefined. So from the remote side, if we MySQL user root login and select everything from, so let's select star from mysql.user, we'll see the users that are defined, root at the loopback adapter and root at the local host name, which is Linux CBT SUSE one There is no root defined at variable which is why the user is not being granted access to the server. However, there is an account that has variable hosts, and that's LCBT Prods Products Demo. This user appears to have all privileges. Notice the Ys that are turned on in the user table. So this is an account that we could try to run the MySQL check with. So let's try that out. So we're going to authenticate as LCBT Products Demo. Let's just put this into memory again from the remote side changing the username or supplying a username since we haven't it's defaulting to who we are within the Linux world and this will prompt us for the password for that user and if we know the password it will work let's just try it again we whenever it takes a while either the server is extremely busy or we indicated the wrong password or the user doesn't have the rights to execute the query against the remote server. And notice, 
took a little while, but it actually came back. So that means it worked. So the user was able to authenticate, run the query, and across the wire we see that the tables are up to date. If we wanted to optimize the database, for example, we would connect as the same user, but instead of checking those tables that have changed since the last check, we'll tell it to optimize. And this will attempt to optimize all databases, which can be a slow process. Also, a full repair can be a slow process. So, check repair across the wire. MySQL check. User, we used this user. Prompt for password. And we had it perform a check since the last change against all databases. And it performs it across the wire. Let's see what it's doing now with the following check. So it has optimized the following, but the ones that are not okay that are set to tables already up to date are already optimized. No further optimizations could be applied. So at least some of them benefited from the optimization process, which again can reclaim some unused space amongst other things. And if you have a dangerous situation that warrants a full repair, for example, you could always turn on the full repair option, which is dash R. So 3D, for example, would be a full repair, which is basically just the R option. But this is, of course, a much slower process. And then there's also auto repair, which when it encounters problems, will automatically repair the table for you, as opposed to simply reporting what it has found. And there's also an analysis option, which returns information regarding the status of the table. Run MySQL check with no options, scroll up, and you'll see the various options, including what's becoming more prevalent Yes, the cell connectivity options to encrypt the communications between the client and the server. Here's the analyze option. Let's let's analyze the table before we perform a full check. So instead of optimize, we'll analyze. And this will perform an analysis, which will include whether or not there are inconsistencies with the tables. So these are routine things that, as the administrator, you should do behind the scenes anyway. You should have cron scripts that perform optimizations, analyses. Granted, if you have a DBA, that person is likely to perform these tasks. But as a systems administrator engineer, you may also perform these tasks to further improve the efficiency and performance of your client data that rests in MySQL. Now for a full repair, as we've mentioned, it's simply the R option. This will repair all databases which can take forever if there's considerable damage. Not only that, if there's considerable data. Supposing you're managing a couple hundred gigabytes or maybe tens of terabytes of data with MySQL spread across disparate hard drives, then it could take a long time to crunch through the tables. So as it stands, our environment is pretty straightforward. There aren't many problems currently, so we have not allowed our tables to get to an inconsistent state. And another option is the fast option. Let's just throw that one in there as well, because this, this you'll use if you suspect that MySQL has been shut inappropriately or abruptly. So the fast check and this checks tables that have not been closed properly. So if you perform a normal check and my SQL check returns that it believes that a table has been closed incorrectly, a fast check would have found that for you. Just turn on the fast option, which is a long option despite its name. And let's change this recover to the long option fast 
This will run through quickly looking for tables that were closed improperly. And if it finds them, then it'll report. And if all the tables are consistent, then the state will be up to date slash OK. So as it stands, our tables are in good shape for all of the databases that we're managing. So that's a little bit about MySQL check. You generally don't encounter this tool unless you've got data corruption problems, at which point a full recovery may be the only way for you to escape safely. Now, one other note we should just mention. Unlike MySQL check, there isn't a built-in backup command. So consider backing up your tables prior to recoveries. And there are a number of methods you could use, and we'll just note, i.e. MySQL dump as a method, for example, etc. MySQL hot copy, MySQL dump, perhaps your enterprise database, or your enterprise backup system for your database management system. Find a way of backing it up. Another way to back up your database tables is to simply back up the directory tree straight off the file system. So it's suggested that before you make any changes with MySM check or MySQL check, that you back up your tables and then perform the checks or the repairs at least. The checks can always be performed, but then you perform the repairs after you've backed the tables up.